I did have one thing that I was going to sort of ask to agenda bash in for 30 seconds, which is a, a request for people to think about something. Um, okay. Not a lot of discussion. So. All right. Let, um, let's let's go ahead and um, we'll get to the. I mean, you can agenda bash in whenever it, whenever is appropriate. Yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. Welcome everyone to our uh, weekly uh, virtual interim. We're going to do one more of these after this on the 23rd, but we're going to take the 30th of October off because uh, many of you will be already in route to um, Dublin. Uh, as always, this session is being recorded. And I'd like to actually start by welcoming Magnus, our new co-chair. Uh, we um, Alan can, couldn't be here today, but um, I think those of you who are longtime ITFers know <laughs> Magnus quite well. Um, I think he'll bring a lot of great real-time WebRTC type experience, and um, obviously he's a very, very experienced chair and IETFer and all this. And I, you know, I I love working with Magnus. He, we were co ids like a million years ago, and uh, and we had a great time working together. So, welcome, Magnus. Thank you. So. I mean, I'm, Colin, what are you saying about, <laughs> you said a million years ago, <laughs> how long is it since we were co-EDs? <laughs> I think it was, it was actually four, but I rounded up to a million. <laughs> All right. But, yeah. uh, as always, this is the note well. Um, I don't think anyone here is uh, looking at the attendee list, like you've all seen this before, but as always, um, you know, if you've never actually bothered to look at the intellectual property and code of conduct implications of you being here, uh, please take a look. You can look. You can find this on any search engine. Uh, as always, um, actually, Magnus. Well, as always, um, uh, for chat, for technical chat, we're going to use the Zulip. There is a link in the Google Meet chat to that that's pinned, so you can certainly see that. Um, uh, like we have, we're bad at this, but let's please try to keep our technical discussion in the in the Zulip. Uh, and if you like it, Google Meet chat at most should be like, I can't hear you kind of stuff. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, that ra rather than anything technical, um, because the Google Meet chat is not archived. Uh, let's see. So also, uh, please sign the attendee list. Um, there is a link in multiple places, but most easily probably in the Google Meet chat. Um, what we call the blue sheets, I'm going to try to start calling an attendee list because it's less jargony. But just add your name and affiliation to that, please. And as always, we're going to use Google Meet for um, all the actual AV stuff. Um, the show of hands function is pretty good, if I say so myself. Um, it you know cues things in order. So if you would like to be, if you would like to talk, please just raise you raise your hand in Google Meet. All right, this is our agenda. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to get a more detailed uh, breakdown of the open PRs that Ian wanted to discuss before starting. But um, this is the last meeting we're going to have before um, um, for the draft deadline. So uh, I think the priority is stuff we can land in time for Dublin. Uh, well, you wanted 30 seconds. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and give you those 30 seconds, but just not quite the second because I don't have a scribe. But I'll put you as first on the agenda. Is it, is it, OK. Um, does anyone else have any bashing to do on this agenda? No. Okay. Uh, I, I, before we, before I ask for a scribe, although you should know that this is coming, I would like to actually comment about this a little bit. We've often said in a way to sort of bargain with people to say, you know what, you just need to write down the key decisions. You don't have to write every single thing that everyone said. And it's viewed as like, if you want to kind of do a half big job, like you can do that. But really, there's an implication in there that people are taking that you should really write down everything. And I'd like to say that as actually like strictly worse. We are getting feedback that it is hard to like keep track of what is going on in the working group. And uh, one issue is the lack of like easy summaries. And what's what's happened is I think Alan has taken or actually writing manually summaries of what's happening in meetings and emailing them to specific people, which is not nearly as optimal as just having good minutes. If people want to follow the, the the blow by blow discussion, there is a recording that is on YouTube, so it's it's freely available to everybody in in almost all countries. Um, so it would actually be strictly better for whoever our scribe is to just write down kind of the key actions that have come out of um, each of these discussions. So uh, with that, so like, please do that. Um, uh, and with that said, who's willing to be our scribe today? Uh, I can volunteer. Thank you, Sebastian. 
All right. With that, I'm done with slides. Colin, you wanted 30 seconds, so uh, take it. Yeah. So, I, I mean, um, Luke published a pretty caustic, as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, sort of uh, attack against, you know, complaints about Cisco, let me put it that way. And it was phrased against Cisco. And I, I, I really, I, I don't think that's appropriate for an ITF thing. It should be directed at individuals, if there's individuals behaving badly. Um, and uh, I'm very open to any feedback on what, you know, how I am or any of my colleagues are behaving. Um, but I, I don't think that this is uh, an appropriate thing to be to be happening with our community. Um, and I don't have any good ideas of how to improve that, uh, though fully willing to acknowledge perhaps I'm part of the problem, but people should should help express that to me. But I, I'd like to I, I'd like to see people get some information to the chairs, ADs, whoever about you know how we can have a less toxic environment about this because this is this is not appropriate and not really acceptable so that's sort of my request for people it's I, I don't i don't have any concrete actions myself right now i'm still thinking about this sort of processing it a little bit but i'd, I'd ask people to think about what they can do and how, how to think about that if that's a fair request particularly the chairs yeah thank you colin um Luke's thing was not really necessarily, I think, about the chairs, uh, and I am also not necessarily taking any action items out of it. But, but I will say that I've received other like indirect feedback about things that aren't maybe not going great in the group and but things the chairs are not doing well. And like I, I would really, I, people who know me in other leadership positions know that like I'm, I'm pretty chill about stuff. And like, if you, <laughs> I really like you to just come directly and immediately when things are, are not going well, rather than like, go complain to the AD necessarily. Um, uh, it's fine for you to talk to the ADs. Our head's also great, but um, uh, it will it'll be fixed faster and it'll probably a little more directly if you just ask us to do something differently um, than have it get filtered through the telephone game. Okay, thank you, uh, everyone yep. and Colin. Okay, so Ian, do you have um, something queued up? I have specific questions um, about Fetch that because uh, draft deadline I believe is next Monday. I'm sorry, but before you launch into it, um, oh, if, if, if you're relatively, if you just joined us, please click on the link to the minutes that are in the Google Meet chat and add your name to the attendee list. Thank okay. you. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. okay, I need to do that too. Um, I had some specific, oh, someone added my name, although slightly off, but that's okay. Um, the... Yeah, so fetch. There's some a few open questions. I think the draft deadline's next Monday. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think there are other PRs I expect to land before then. But um, if there are some, can people please point them out to me? And if we need to discuss those, like, just let me know. Uh, now would be a great time. Just just to make sure they're on my radar, and as well as like making sure that. Oh yes. Uh, to us. Or to us. Um, I, I think there. I saw like a couple of PRs that clarifies uh, things. It, more, more. Uh, some of those things I thought uh, we, at least on the P, PR reviews, we have we had co constructive comments on those things. Um, I'm not sure if that we need to land it or not. But if we get the chance to discuss, that would be nice. Yeah. Good All right. Point. So, so I, I, let me propose this, Ian. Why don't you? Why don't you deal with everything you think has a chance of landing? And if sure. we and if we still have time, then we can open the. I mean, I think there's some other interesting things to discuss. I know that I have one. Um, maybe Bangers can adjudicate that, <laughs> given everything. But um, uh, uh, why don't we get what you think you can land on Monday, and then we'll just open it up to discuss some of the other sure. stuff. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm going to present for a brief moment then. Um... Um, so I tried to, admittedly, later than I expected, um, make all the changes that were requested, which basically restores filter types for subscribe, um, kind of makes some minimal changes to subscribe, like you can't subscribe to things that are completely in the past. Um, the text is still a little bit vague about, it says a subscription causes the publisher to send newly published objects for a track. That was sort of that's sort of the intent of subscribe, but like 
now we're letting you ask for things in the past. I don't know if that hand waviness is is okay for now. Um, so, sorry, which I mean, I'm just lost so much PR, uh, and I just say uh, I I clicked sorry. on the wrong one. Thing. Let's go. It, can everyone see the my screen or? Oh, okay. Sorry. That's, okay. That's, no, I, I couldn't. Just, but I'll get to it. So as an individual, like, and I think I've said this last week, but I'm, I'm fine with the draft having a temporary overlap between subscribe and fetch. And like, I know, granted, like it makes no sense right now, but uh, speaking as an implementer, I, I'll, I'll say it again. Like I, I would much rather have, I'd much rather, uh, what I don't want to do is hurry to implement a half-baked subscribe uh, before Dublin and then have to redo it when we figure out what we actually want to do uh, in like draft eight. So like, let's just have like a screwy subscribe so I don't have to touch the code. And then like, what you propose here is like, it's like three lines of code and like 10 lines of test. Fine, it, it's no problem. But like having this, like doing major surgery subscribe that we haven't fully argued out, like, you know, uh, current group stuff. Can I get zero from the current group, et cetera? Like, I, I don't want, I don't want to do that. On, I don't want to commit that until we've settled it okay. good. as an uh, individual. Okay. I tried to do that now. I, I tried to make the yeah. animal changes. Um, uh, Cullen and then, yeah. I, I No, I'm just having a, I, I'm not seeing, I don't know which PR we're talking about here. I'm not seeing your screen, Ian, if you're sure. No, you're not seeing Five, my screen. 581. Yep. 581. Okay, thanks. Yep. Um, let's move to the question that I think uh i need resolved which is what the fetch header looks like mm -hmm. um suha suggested this that looks reasonable does that match what people expect it's a little bit problematic in the sense that it allows you to change the Priority, I think, on every object, even though really you can only change it on every subgroup. Yeah, I mean, I think this is the best we can do for now. Um, I did raise a separate issue that, like, I, that I, I agree we don't have to settle necessary for commit this, but like, there's the question: Is it possible to, if you receive something as a relay, if you get something via fetch, is it is it like logically possible if you deliver it via subscribe? And if the answer is no, there's a lot of stuff that's just unneeded. Uh, we don't need subgroup ID uh, necessarily. We don't need, I don't think we need publisher priority. Um, but like for the time being, I, 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 think, I think the reply that people had in the issue was like, for now, let's just like include everything and prune it later. And I think that's okay. And I, I think the unfortunately it's just, I think the publisher priority thing is just like an error case we have to deal with. Um, whether we should probably specify what you do if you get changing publisher priority, but um, it's just life for now. Oops. Uh, if you folks are on the queue, uh, Colin. Um, this is just refreshing my memory. So, wasn't like when a when you fetch some data and it's competing with subscribe data, right? We said we were going to we were going to have uh, the the publisher. Publisher priorities on both that were were used appropriately. So, where where do those priorities come from? Your your, your thinking here, Martin. I'm just and this is well, uh, okay. I'm so arguing one way or another. I'm just well. Confused. So so yeah. so okay. Yeah. Well, uh, published priorities is a messed up subject as we just discussed in Boston. And um, next week we're going to talk about that when Victor and and Alan are here to, to for their dueling things. But like the first order is subscriber priority. So both well, fetch and, fetch and subscribe have priorities in them, those messages have priorities in them that are in the same priority space. And so a receiver can prioritize those two things. Okay, and, and um, those don't go beyond the first hop relay. So after the first hop relay, how are they prioritized relative to each other? Well, I mean, relays need to like figure out how they, I mean, there's a, there's a broader question. I'm not sure it's, I don't have a firm opinion on whether we need to like have something prescriptive here, but fe but like anytime you aggregate subscribes and or fetches, like really need some logic on how they consolidate those into upstream subscribes and fetches and how they prioritize them, right? Um, we have text on that in the draft for subscribe. Okay, great. It says okay, they basically unless there unless it's a special type of relay, there's some sort of carve out fractions, but in most in the broad case, 
they do not propagate the subscribe priority up the stream and right. they rely on the publisher priority, right? Right. Uh, well, if, if that's what it says, that that is fine with me. But like uh, the point is, so published pri like published priority is specifically a subgroup property that is decided yep. by the original publisher, and yep. in, in in the subscribe world, that propagates down through all these subscribes, right? So yep. totally um, right. It, like I don't even know. How, like for fetches, I don't know how you would even relate published priority to anything because like the uh, you have a track with like multiples obviously many many subgroups in it and so potentially many subgroup priorities so unless you want to go back to this like max min thing we had that we were trying to get rid of <laughs> like right, there's no right. real way uh, it's it's not well, unclear I mean, like, how you would map a publisher team. priority to a to a yeah, okay. to a fetch so I, I sort of feel like we need some way of saying i think we've heard use cases that where people want the fetch higher than than the than the various information of flying over the subscribes and there's pro cases where they want the fetch lower priority than than all the stuff going over the subscribes and without so okay so i see we, we don't maybe we don't really have a, a resolution to this yet but i i just yeah. i thought we were comparing a priority a fetch priority to a to the publisher priority at that level like at the second level I, I don't really care. I don't really care I just but I don't think that just yeah. like we can't leave it as the relays will magically know what to do because they don't have the information they need to get the yeah. information somewhere from the right population. so I mean so I would recommend that in terms of the specific issue of what we put in the fetch header like for for now we just have the subgroup publisher priority in the object header because I see and, right. and like how yeah, that's okay. actually result and punt the rest of the week because later, we, how it we, we have a large we have a larger request about polish priority and the key players aren't here for that okay i'm going to oh, put my okay, head down thanks i understand okay. that thank you right. hmm. uh sure. Uh, uh, I, I think if, if we are not clear about the publisher priority at this point in time, um, like if that's the thing, we, we can omit that for now and have an open issue on how, how what, the, the, the question we are trying to answer is here is that when, when relay is responding to a fetch, uh, what the object should include in itself. And we, we, we basically decided to get everything the canonical object could have in it. Uh, but the object will be sent at, on the stream with the priority that matches the fetch priority uh, downstream. Okay. I, I am, as an individual, I am fine with either omitting it or doing exactly what you suggested. I think we're going to have to, yeah. changes will have to be made. But um, anyway, uh, Magnus. Yeah, still trying to catch up here, but I mean, shouldn't this mostly contain the same response header as subscribe? So, and if that has published a priority, that sounds like it should be here too. But uh, so there's a packaging difference. Um, yeah, that's yeah. that we we've you know peeps are packaged as a peep and that's intended to be transmitted over a stream. Here we've decided to put things in um, group and then uh, object ID order, and so we have kind of like two ordering systems that are different, not conflicting. Okay. But so, so, so I can, so Magnus, like the, the the weird thing about published priority and subgroup ID is they only mean anything if you are the only reason you send them on the wire is if it is going to be repackaged in a subscribe, because it only matters for the way you built you construct streams and how you prioritize those streams. But a fetch come or fetch reply comes on a single stream, so none of that is operative. So, the, the, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I, okay, so okay. um. Go ahead, Magnus. Yeah, I was okay. I, I I guess there's this interesting corner case between where you use fetch to re repair something you're actually further distributing as a part of a subscribe. Right. And so there's a separate issue for that. And I, I think we since we're not really redoing subscribe yet, we can't answer that question. So I would recommend Ian that we as an individual, there's leave in published priority for now. Let's have all the metadata. And once we redesign subscribe, then we can I mean, there's an issue where we can go back and look at this and prune out the stuff that isn't needed. Right. We, we, we could kill subgroup ID and publish priority if we have some very strict, if if we can guarantee that you will never deliver fetch payloads via subscribe, then we can, there's stuff we can eliminate, but we're nowhere near there yet. Okay, right. sounds good. Let's, I will move forward with that then. Um, I had a list of other things I wanted to ask. Um, Martin pointed out that uh, there's a few more editorial things. 
I would encourage people to make suggestions if you have like in a few cases people have suggested like very sensible text. Um, feel free to make a suggestion in GitHub instead of a comment. I think everyone has that ability, right? It's not like a permissions issue. Um, one other thing in here I want to discuss. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. I I think I have the information I need now to finish everything, but um people should feel free to follow up and make follow-up comments. I do have related questions though, uh, which I'd like to go into. Um please do. Right. So um Suhas uh on the side asked if we need a fetch mode for start at the latest group for the use case when you want to start the group, but really subscribe is for the live head. And so you might not get things that are old um, and to meet that use case. Did you want to say anything else about that to us? Um, um, not, not particularly at this point in time, because like since we are not talking about subscribe, I'm not sure because the, the, the context behind that was um, if, if you're doing fetch, um, I think there, there are use cases where we wanted to have uh, start from the current group. Uh, there was and and have a smooth transition. And one of the discussions that came out like if fetch had something a type to say uh, you can st uh, start from the beginning of the group, and that along with uh, uh, subscribe would get the smooth transition happening. Uh, I'm not sure. Like maybe there are a couple of ways we can solve this problem. I'm not yeah. sure if we have to do it now or when we do with when we deal with subscribes. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, feel free to file an issue if that's helpful. Okay, but I um, just wanted to bring that up. Um, as an editor, um, can I kill track per stream now that we have this fetch PR? Um, I, that was one of my nominees for like other issues to discuss, but like maybe we should close this one before. But I think, I mean, I don't think I have any other questions on. Okay. That that's unless other people have things they'd like to bring up, up about the PR. I realized it got updated about an hour ago, and I apologize for. for that. Does anyone need to? Does, can anyone? Can anyone? Does, does anyone feel a need to like look at this one last time before Ian uh, merges it? Speak now. Uh, I would sort of like to have a chance to look at it again, but I. How long do you need? Really, I I don't. You, you know what. If I'm the only person, like, right. I, mean, what, I can comment on the draft as well as the PR, right? <laughs> I, I can uh, I, I can read it um, once more, and if it helps, like, by the end of this meeting. Okay. okay. I mean, um, I am, why don't I aim to merge at end of tomorrow? Um, I actually, there's a few more editorial comments that I kind of forgot to pull in that are, like, not critical, but, like, you know, and I need to reflow, apparently, some text and do some other minor stuff. So like, um, I do want to do it soon, but I would rather have people have a chance to, to take another look at it. Um, I don't think there I'll are read it things today. that are outstanding. Hmm? I'll read it today. Thank you, Ian. Okay. You're more than welcome. And yeah, so end of tomorrow. Okay. I was on some time zone, I'm not sure which. All right. So um, for other issues we have, um, so Ian already mentioned stream per track. Um, I don't want to spend a ton of time like arguing about what issue to argue about, but <laughs> but uh, uh, stream the stream for track forwarding preference we still need it. Um, I I uh, I sent out some slides to the list a couple of days, like literally two slides about uh, kind of building off of Colin's PR about how to close streams. And now that we have subgroups, um, that might be an interesting discussion. Although I don't know if I mean it might end in a PR. I don't know. And then um, uh, Sue House, what did you want to talk about? You had something. I, I think there was one PR on the uh, identifying groups um, uh, or gaps in the groups or something. I think we we had the similar discussions for a while, and I thought Colin's PR that it's kind of it, it was somewhat in editorial, but also it was recommending like laying down laying out the scenarios. I, I thought if any if if you have feedback on that, that would be helpful as a group. Okay, 
So any, any other issues that people really want to discuss today in the half hour we have remaining? I mean, I, there's a comment on there. There's some comments on that, which I don't quite understand. I wouldn't mind spending one minute of trying to just understand why what we might have a difference in what the words we mean by gap is what I'm trying to get. So I wouldn't mind a little bit of on talking about that PR, though I do not expect to resolve it nor land it today. So Magnus, do you mind um, figuring out like which one I'm going to talk about? Because <laughs> I, 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 I'm very opinionated about this. Just running a quick process. Like I don't want to spend more than like a minute on this, but we can run a quick process with a show of hands or whatever to like figure yeah. out what we're going to talk about. Uh, let's see. But can, can I? Yes, can Ian. I, Thirty seconds or one minute on the can I kill stream per track? Like I literally yes. just need a show of hands. Okay. It se seems yeah, like Ian and Colin. Well, I'm sorry. Magnus. I want to kill it. I think yeah. it's it doesn't need to be there, and it's just more text to read. I think the whole reason we didn't kill it before is we didn't have a fetch PR. Now we think we're going to land that in the next 48 hours. So I okay. Would kill it. Do, does anyone on the call want to like speak for the stream per track forwarding preference, which is a publisher, original publisher dictated thing? I'm going to give like five or 10 seconds for somebody to decide this is important to them. Okay, I will take the action item to email the list and verify that, that because I, we, we need to do that. We need to take it to the list before we do something this big. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna send something to the list and set a deadline for like Monday, <laughs> like first thing in the morning Monday or Sunday night or something. No, I, look, I'm, I'm, I'm not okay with things going to the list with less than basically a two week call. I mean, people just, we can't expect people to read right. the list every day. Right. Like if, we, if you don't think, like if you're gonna say Monday, don't bother sending it to the list. I don't care if you send it to the list or not, but if you're gonna send something to the list, you well, gotta- then we'll, we'll kill it after Dublin. I guess that's just the-, the, the Why don't we just delete. kill it now and then someone can object later. I mean, we've been <laughs> discussing this for months now. It's not like this is a new idea. Like if someone was going to die on this hill, they should have died. Oh, I'm, fine. I'm with Ian on this one. <laughs> I, I, I think we have we have discussed this several times, and many of the times we came to once fetch is done, we'll kill it. So fetch is almost done. So yeah, we should wait. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm getting a lot of feedback that we're not doing we're not doing consensus calls on the list. Um, what do you think, Magnus? You're new to this. Yeah, saying I mean I I don't have the history here, uh, but he's. What does it do to leave it in for now? I, I, I got a proposal for how to resolve this little thing. Send the mm -hmm. consensus call to the list and ask for it, and at the same time, remove it from the editor draft and the draft we publish. If the consensus call comes back the wrong way, Ian will have to do the work of adding it back in. That's right. Would that work? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think so. That's yeah. good, I good mean, solution. If, but while we do that, if you're going to do the consensus call, I think you should include fetch in that email because I think fetch is a much bigger change than removing. Well, there was one. Um, there was one like a number, of, like three or four days ago, saying we were doing this. Okay. 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 Comment immediately okay. if you have a, a problem. Okay. Um, I would like to go on to Cullen's PR, and if, if that's okay, sorry, I'm not trying to overrule you, Magnus. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think that's fine. Yeah, I mean, you know, I was the one that was arguing for the other thing, so maybe, uh, yeah. Uh, I will yield, and so yes, go ahead. As an individual, I yield as a as a chair. Therefore, I can just recognize you. <laughs> go for it. Okay. okay, Colin, go for it. Oh, okay. So I'll, I'll keep this really short, so we can move on to the other stuff. Um, there's a part of this I'm in trying to understand in the the comments coming back, and I want to make sure we we have the same stream. So when we were talking about the peep stuff, the motivating use case we used for a huge majority of it was you're doing. Uh, temporal video and you know you've got a 30 frame per second uh, base layer and then a 60 frame per second enhancement layer and you're going to put those on different subgroup IDs and so that would largely end up if you're doing a frame per object you know all your uh, even objects are on one substream and all your odd objects are on the other substream right like uh, everybody's on page with me here I'm like they're great everyone agrees with that design Okay, so if you have enough bandwidth for one of those subgroups, but not the other subgroup, but not the, not the lower priority one with the, the 60 frames per second, you're gonna get all of the base layer. So you're gonna have all the even objects, 
but you're going to be missing a lot of the odd objects. Does anyone disagree with that? Because I have several comments in the thread that seem to be people disagree with that. And I just need to understand, am I missing it? Or am I using the wrong terminology? Like, why are we saying different things on just that sort of use case? Because it seemed like we talked about that use case a lot. Um, so I'm looking for any feedback on understanding what, you know, why I'm not seeing this the same. What are other people seeing that I'm not seeing here? Like, uh, do I have my terminology wrong? Am I looking at this the wrong way? What's How do other people see this? So, so Colin, are, are you confused by Alan's comment there? Well, and I've received other comments sort of off off list too that sort of seem similar of like, no, no, there can't be gaps. And it seems to me like I would think that if you only got the odd, the even frames and none of the odd frames, that that's the definition of gaps in the object ID to me. And so like that's, yeah, that's what I'm trying to understand. Well, and I, I, can, I, well I think you and Alan may be talking past each other. I mean, I think he's I'm being sure more specific are. about the mechanism. Like it, it's not that you, you skip, it, it, the, the way that you get the way that a draft a, a gap actually happens is the delivery timeout for that object passes before it has a chance to be delivered because of bandwidth constraints and I so see. yeah okay okay and so um yeah so like it, it's 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 a it's a little bit i mean if, if you said it if you, had so an infinite, if, you if, if, if you if you had an infinite delivery timeout there would be no gaps well, let, let, let me back that up. If, uh, if you had an infinite time of bandwidth and if the data ever arrived, there'd be no gaps. Correct. And uh, now, like, with the, with, the, with the proviso that as the draft currently exists, uh, as I understand it, um, uh, ult original publishers can create object ID gaps for arbitrary reasons. So I could just choose to start an object five or, like, have timestamps for object IDs with, like, huge gaps in them, et cetera. Like, that is currently allowed. And I, 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 and many people would like to get rid of that. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm, not, I, I'm not debating that topic at all. That's a whole separate issue. Yeah. About okay. The crazy. Yeah. But okay. So so you think that the where the confusion is here is is I'm saying there can be gaps, but what they're saying is there can only be gaps if the delivery timeout is exceeded. Which and we're, we're sort of agreeing. I'm just being not nuanced enough about that. Is that where I'm getting this sort of messed up in my phrasing? Maybe I mean I, I, I mean so. Alan's Alan's comment is a little confusing that it says like limited bandwidth by itself is not a cause, but like limited bandwidth leads to delivery timeouts, which then leads to which then like causes object gaps, right? So it's you're kind of both right, but just not okay. So look, I, I figured we we're talking past each other. Thank you, that was really helpful. I think that that's what I was looking for. I'm going to go try. Given that, I'm going to try and maybe maybe I'll be able to understand these comments better and clean it up a little bit tighter. Um, and that's you know. Um, I, that that really is the time. I mean, I see Mo on the queue, so go ahead, Mo. Okay. I think whenever we talk about gaps or missing objects, there's always confusion about whether or not that means a gap in delivery, meaning that the delivery order is not as you expected it, or does it mean you waited for some time, whether it's a delivery timeout or some other time, you waited for some time and you still don't have an, an object so I think there's a lot of confusion when people say gaps or missing, whether it's instantaneous at time of delivery or whether it's after some period, like a delivery timeout, you still haven't gotten it. Um, and I think we need to be clear in the text about those two cases. I don't think we should ever expect a, a mandate that the delivery order is always is always sequential. Well, the so the I, order I mean, is, a, is anyone's hand up? No. Okay. So. Um, now that we have subgroups, um, you will absolutely not get objects groups in strict object ID order. You'll get them in general. Well, I mean, you might, but like you will often get um, you know the higher priority subgroups first. Uh, within a subgroup, which is kind of unknowable, there's so you have no idea. Like there, there will be skips inside a subgroup, right? Like it's one, and it, like it'll be odds or whatever, or every three or every four object IDs. So the receiver has no idea what those gaps are, but they will be in monotonically increasing order. You can, like if two and four are in the same set of you cannot get four if you don't get two, like period. There's no, there's no way to not do that. Um, I, I, I agree, yeah, yeah, so that's good. 
my point is I think at the time when we specify something in the draft about gaps or missing, I think we need to specify exactly the time scale that that means. And does that mean a delivery timeout? And if so, yeah, you know, that's what we that's what we should make sure is clear in, in the draft. Agreed. Agreed. I think we've had a little bit of back and forth on exactly like what we want to do and what we want to send. And so unfortunately, at the moment, I think the draft is a little more vague than it probably should be. But hopefully we're converging on something. Okay. So. Colin, have we put that issue to bed for you? At least for now? Uh, Colin's gone. Okay. Um, so, like, as an individual, I wouldn't mind talking about the. Oh, there he is. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, that was user pilot. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind talking about like closing streams, but I want. I also want to leave the floor open for any other issues that people want to try to tackle. I would. I would love to see your slides. Okay. Yeah. Let me do that. Can you unshare, please? Oh yes. Thank you. So there are only two slides. This should be pretty fast. Um. I can't so, Colin, so I, I want to give credit. Colin opened this subject, um, and thank you for doing that. And he kind of put it up a straw man. And, and like, I actually went and spent probably the better part of a day trying to implement a good fin algorithm, and it got a little ugly. Um, as it stands, like, uh, obviously, every subgroup is its own stream and ought to be either fin or reset, right? Um, if it, if there's an end of subgroup, specific end of subgroup object, this is very straightforward. You just send the fin after end of subgroup. If a particular subgroup also contains like an end of group or end of track object or a group does not exist object that like clearly has to be the last object in the stream, so you can also fin it. But there's also language in there that an end of group is implicitly a close of all streams of subgroups for that group, which is like logically fine, but is like hard to implement um right so just to so like as a relay wh when can i fin, fin a stream going like that i'm sending down based on something i've subscribed to so obviously it's any of these like special objects that that implicitly close that stream that that must be the last object in the subgroup because it and it, it, it ticks the end of then clearly i can fin after that without much fear of doing some breaking anything um End group and end of track can be used to implicitly close other streams, but this gets a little difficult. Um, uh, not impossible, but it's it's laborious because you have to kind of keep a scoreboard of what you've received. So I've got this example with three subgroups in a group, um, and the deal here, the, the the key thing. So nothing. Say say I get, say I have no fins at this initially. No, I know end of subgroup markers. Um, Oh, I should say, like, there's some, I think there's a little, like, ill-defined hesitation to, like, require end of subgroup markers, because that just adds a lot of, like, that kind of messes up object ID space a little bit. Um, I mean, maybe people just want to do it that way. But uh, regardless, so in this example, um, the first, like, special object I receive is object eight in subgroup two, which is an end of group. So obviously, subgroup two can immediately be finned after I send that. Now, subgroup one uh, consists of objects one, four, and seven. And since end eight is the end of the group, I know that there cannot be any more objects on subgroup one. So I can then fin subgroup one. Subgroup zero has zero and three, and there, you know the one that's missing here is six. Now, six might not exist. Six might be in zero, um, but I, I cannot fin zero. Now, like, if six had arrived already, then I would have been able to fin zero, but then also again, I, it means I have to have some logic. And this is kind of hard to implement, uh, where like I check that, that everything between six and the end of the group eight is present in some subgroup to um, to enable fit in order to fin that stream. Yes, Colin? Well, I mean, uh, this, this, I mean, I agree this would work and, and is optimal in some ways, but this seems like an incredible amount of uh, processing and work yes. for a high speed relay to do. Um, yes, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly my point, sir. 
yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I wrote this code. I wrote like I was writing a fun. I'm like, oh, this is gross. And so I this like when I say this is gross, I'm like, oh, like time to come back to the working group. Okay. So um, the other thing observation I'll make is that like in general, like we're just talking about subscribe to your fetch is a whole different animal. In general, if the upstream connection is fin to stream, uh, that generally means that I've received all the subgroups on that stream. And there are two examples I can think of in the current spec that, where that's not the case. One is if my subscription actually ends in the middle of a group. So like I'm subscribing to group, the end of my subscription is five, uh, group five, object five. And then I get group five, object five. I have no idea if that's actually the end of the subgroup or not, right? Um, uh, secondly, is if there's some sort of like go away thing where like uh, uh, like this this thing is going to send me stuff anymore, and you know like and and like I get to five five, and this this and the sender's like you know what I'm done, like go to your other source now, so I'm just going to send you a fin. Um, as it currently as it currently stands, there's only two reasons I cannot take a fin and just relay it to the to the downstream subscriber. Um, okay, so all right, there's so one solution. Yes, Ian. Uh, in the latter case, I would argue probably you should send a reset. Uh, yeah, I mean, so there's some prescriptive, there's, like there's, there's some prescriptive rules we could we could do here, and okay. we'll get to that. Right. Um, uh, so I say there's so one like easy like easy to write solution to this is just require end of subgroup objects every time you end a subgroup that eliminates all ambiguity about fins. Uh, if I'm not received into subgroup, then the subgroup is not complete. And if I want to stop sending on it, I need to send a reset stream or reset stream at. Um, okay, so that's one solution that's easy, and there's not even a slide for it because it's easy. Uh, like my my, my I have like some reluctance that I, as, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a little reluctant to require orders from publishers to generate these these things. Like I can't really completely articulate why, but it seems it seems it, icky to me. All right. So here, here's another proposal that that I think would work logically. So to, for, to, and that is basically to use upstream fins to inform downstream fins, and it just requires a few rules. Um, so if if you have subscribed that has an end point, it has to end on a group boundary. Um, like as far as I can tell, the subscribe end um, thing is mainly for like like bit rate handovers and stuff is what's been articulated to me. Um, uh, so like, I don't, I don't, this doesn't strike me as a terribly like prescriptive thing to just, or uh, uh, like terribly limiting this thing. No, you actually have to end your subscription on a group boundary. You can't subscribe to, until like some arbitrary point in the middle of the group. And that solves that one fin ambiguity we have. Yes, Ian. Um, I mean, if you really want to cancel it, you can just do subscribe cancel and then whatever happens, I assume. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I guess my point is, if you do cancel, then you might get a reset, and that's fine. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, like if you that's, really get so, uh, so, uh, so actually, so you're you, you've made a great point. Like, I think there's there's more rules here than I put on the slide. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> so, no, so uh, I, I did I did not talk about subscribe by date or un unsubscribe at all. Um, you putting this constraint is not particularly problematic because the the case where this isn't true, you can just be like, whatever, I'm going to kill it. Yeah, I'm just going to like kill this. So like, yeah, so so I think what you're suggesting is we need a rule like unsubscribe either ends on a group boundary or or not unsubscribe. Yeah, unsubscribe ends on a group boundary or alternatively ends in a reset stream. Yeah, I mean, I also think we should decide whether or not you can ever use stop sending. But... Right. Yes, Colin. Um, so, so the, like, like that's really making sense of like the, the the fin and reset sort of semantics there semantics. But I think you also need a set of rules. Like, look, upstream resets it, and you never hear from them again. Um, when do you close your downstream, right? And so I think that you have are going to have to have some rules that involve timers as well. Like, I don't like I, this looks good, but yeah. uh, I don't think it's enough. Well, so like sending re sending reset is is another thing, and I, I think we'll get there. Um, Maybe not. So you see if this answers your questions as I finish talking through this. Okay. okay. So 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 the other the other um Tim. So just a quick question. If you have one subgroup stream that is reset, we reset everything for the, the track for the subscription. We no. reset all of the other ones. No, not at all. Reset resets the only thing a reset would mean. Uh, would be that you did you did I did not send you all the objects in the stream. 
in the subgroup. And, you know, I think there's logical things that fall fall from that follow from that, but it just certainly does not apply reset of other streams. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Uh, all right. So, so the other exception case was this publisher handover thing, and I think it's probably not too onerous to just also that, like, to do it cleanly. Um, like, if you're sending Finn, you're actually sending the entire subgroup. So, clean publisher handover. Um, yeah, you could reset, but if you're going to do it cleanly, you need to do it on a group battery. Um, okay. So, what that what that would mean then is, therefore, a Finn would actually mean that all groups in the subgroup were delivered. Like you would have an assurance that if you that if you receive that fin and you know and all the, the holes are filled in, you got all the objects. Um, which allows you to then send fin with confidence. And then if for some reason you do not so the only way to not deliver objects in the subgroup is to is to cut the tail off, right? Um, and if that happened, then you would um, you would okay. So for those of you who may not be like following the the, the machinations of quick, there's a there's a new like draft out for something called reset adopt the draft that's called reset stream at, which is reliable reset, which means that you're resetting the stream, but there's some number of bytes that will be delivered reliably. And this is very useful for like web transport where the first few bytes give you like the stream type, which has all this like flow control stuff. So you want to make sure you deliver the stream type. Um, but you otherwise like uh, anything else doesn't need to be retransmitted. Okay, so I don't want to get into the issue whether or not like we need to require support for that extension in MLQ, like some other thing. But like ideally, you would say reset stream at that um, that very least covered the subgroup uh, stream header subgroup, which tells you what subgroup the stream was, what its priority was, and the other things. So you know that there's a subgroup that you're missing. Um, uh, and what subgroup that is, but like uh, none of the actual objects in that subgroup are reliably delivered. And you know, if you can't do that, you could send a reset stream, and that you know makes the accounting a little bit harder at the receiver. But I, I think it would work. So that's kind of the that's kind of the conceptual proposal that I've got here. I don't know if this tramples on anyone's. I mean, I'd be interested to know if this tramples on anyone's use case, or anyone thinks this has serious implementation problems. Uh, I, I think it's like. It's a straightforward, and then the nice thing about subgroups is we've now mapped, we have a very sensible stream mapping, and like, let's use the stream mechanisms we have rather than invent new stuff. Yes, Mike. My question is about the ending on a group boundary. Yeah. Um, does that assume uniform group sizes, or how are we otherwise? Nope signaling like we just know that if the subscription ends it's it's the end of the group and that's not not the other way around not that like you uh have to like pad to the end of a group or something um i'm just thinking about like when an encoder goes away like the event is done maybe we have like long open gops or something uh mm -hmm. it's just assumed that this is the end of the group because the subscription ended uh not well the the precise mechanism that i would encode in a receiver was that i got fins for all the streams in that group and so therefore i know i got all the subgroups uh well actually let me rephrase that in principle i might not have gotten well this 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 okay let me back up so that there's a little ambiguity here on this like reset stream at stuff to me, like an optimal, like maxly prescriptive thing to be would be like if you're not going to deliver a stream, that you actually just send that stream header and then reset stream at it at the so say there, by the way, there's some sub, okay. other subgroup you did not get. So so there'd be reset stream, uh like you essentially reset streams that you weren't gonna actually and you would take an empty you would send an empty stream and then reset it, right? Essentially, to tell you there was other stuff. Um like if we don't allow object ID gaps, that's a, like another way. I'm sorry, a publisher generated object ID gaps. That would be another way. Like you could infer that you were missing stuff because there were object ID gaps. Ian. Um, in general, I don't like the idea of sending anything on a stream that on like an object stream that is not a cacheable thing. And what you're describing sounds an awful lot like a subscription specific piece of information. And so as a result, if we want to do that, like I'd rather send it on some sort of control stream. But 
maybe I'm not fully understanding your proposal, but otherwise so, it's so, well, so, well, so, 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 now I'm so, so in the thing you're saying, not the thing on the well, slides. There. Well, it's okay. Well, so, so the question is like, what if you choose, what if you're like, I'm, what if you, what if like, because of timeouts and stuff, you just never send a particular subgroup, you send zero objects from the subgroup, which is entirely possible. Do you signal that in any way? Um, can it be inferred from object ID gaps? Uh, I mean, you know, um, and like, a very explicit way to do it would be to do this reset stream at thing, which is like you're saying a date, you essentially open a stream and then never act for a subgroup and then never actually set any objects on it because of constraints. Um, I can see why people might dislike that. And I'm not, I, I, yes, Colin. This is uh, Suhas speaking. So, um, like, let's take the example of the 30 FPS and 60 FPS, right? And and for whatever reason, I, as I say, as a, my encoding constraints or what I, I, for, I don't, try to even encode 60 FPS for a while. Uh, but that means that I don't even have to say to the receiver that I'm not encoding that because receivers uh, that's processing the sub other subgroup they are processing. When they get the, the next sub subgroup, they know what to do with it. Or if they don't get, they know what to do with it. It's like, I, I think that's very, very specific to the application, how it handles these two different subgroups. And if if the publisher decides not to send anything, uh, I don't think so. Just say that I'm not going to send it. And that thing. So I mean, maybe this is a metaphysical discussion, but like, if if there's a, like, if the object is never minted, then it's not really missing; it's just not there. Um, so the, there's not there's not any like if the publisher does not create a subgroup, then it then the receivers not need to be notified that it doesn't exist. Right. Um, uh, like that that's I mean I would agree with that. Um, the, the the point is like if something is dry, if if things exist that are fetchable but are not sent for for bandwidth slash timeout reasons. Um, that would be the case that we're talking about. Um, okay, so we're, well, we have eight minutes left. I, I mean, does anyone, was, uh, actually I'll open it up again. Do people feel like this is like the wrong path or like not consistent with their use case or like unimplementable um, in some way? Yes, Colin. I think this is going the right direction and needs more detail, but uh, I do find like the, you know, <laughs> the thinking carefully about what what you learn over the data streams and what you learn over the control streams seems to be like something that needs to be thought about carefully in, in yep. designing. This. But I like what you're doing. Thank you. Okay, Mike. Yeah, I I think this is probably reasonable overall. I just need to think through all the different scenarios because there's a lot of uh, different possibilities right. here. Um, Ian. Yeah, agreed. This is definitely heading in the right direction. Um, I think more detail would be good. Um, as I will say, I would like an if there's, I would love to ask the working group or at least the folks on the call um, whether one can ever, a subscriber can ever send stop sending. So for, and, and I, this came up in particular when I was writing the fetch PR because is it a protocol violation to send a stop sending? on the stream that you're receiving the fetch on? Or is that just a clever way of doing fetch cancel? <laughs> if that makes sense. Like those two things kind of do the same thing, but they're a different layer. And I'm like, is it like you're holding it wrong because you should use fetch cancel? Or is it like, this is fine, who cares? Anyway, Colin. So um, a clarification question to Ian. Uh, I do, do you think um, doing it as a fetch cancel at the mock layer and that mapping it to like stop sending be like, is there a preference? Like why do you think one might be better than the other? I think fetch cancel is better. Okay. And the reason is because I am concerned that if you do stop sending, that if the state machines of the quick layer are not well enough coupled with the mock layer, mm -hmm. that you could end up it wouldn't break things, but you could end up in like awkward situations that would like people would start doing dumb stuff for lack of a better word. Yeah, um, um, it may make or, sense. Or, or like state wouldn't be cleaned up for subscriptions in a or fetches or whatever in like a timely manner. So I think I prefer doing it at the mock layer to make sure that like the application layer stuff gets properly cleaned up. But cool. I'm not going to so, die in that hole. I'm just so, so, so my comment as an individual is like, I mean, I, I'm. Uh, two comments. Number one, I'm like I'm slightly biased towards using existing mechanisms rather than like inventing a new one. But um, if there if there are practical concerns like you mentioned, I think that's fine. I just think it should be one way to do it. Like 
uh, it should be prescribed. Like either you must use fetch unscribe and stop sending is an error, or alternatively, like you stop sending, there's no such message. Like I, I don't want to have like choose your own adventure on this. Mo. Um, yeah, when when we originally were thinking about fetch as uh, on the same stream, bidirectional response on the same stream, then the quick level uh, mechanisms seemed like they'd make a lot more sense. If people want to keep fetch separately on the control stream which i thought was a temporary thing until we could figure out all the nuances of moving it back down to a bi-directional stream if people want to permanently keep fetch on on a uh, control channel message only and the response is a separate just like subscribe open a new stream um then i agree with uh ian that protocol level mechanisms not quick level mechanisms would be more appropriate but i would like to get back to fetch on a bi-directional stream and use quick level mechanisms to cancel it and not even have a fetch cancel or anything like that. Colin, or to us, whichever. Yeah, it's Colin this time. Uh, um, so I, the thing that's going around my mind in thinking about these mechanisms is I'm thinking about, um, we don't quite have them yet, but we're soon going to have uh, smart NICs that offload quick onto the NICs, right? Every one of the major NIC vendors is working on that. So. Um, that i mean i guess i assume there'll be some way to connect those up with the state machine and at the sort of fetch level or whatever but the more we take advantage the more we do that this type of stuff it worries me about how easy it's going to be able to use offload carts so i'm, I'm not sure this pushes it one way or the other um but it's just it's it, it's one of the things i'm trying to think about in trying to make in the trade-offs here I mean, I would be a little curious, again, as an individual, about the status of, like, stop sending APIs and quick implementations. I don't have an answer to this, but I know, like, Google Quiche is a little flaky about this because Reset Stream used to be bidirectional, and now it's not. Um, I wonder how easy it is to just tell someone to tell a quick implementation to send stop sending. It, it's really easy to do that. The hard part is I'm not sure how reliable the signal is at the peer that you like the peer stuff, so. asked you to reset it like a stream yeah. that's yeah. the part that i'm worried i'm worried that that wiring is like okay. not 100 there or maybe not timely or like i'm worried for example like you, you try to write to the stream and the next time you try to write to the stream the library is like that's not there anymore Okay, we have uh, we have two minutes, three minutes. I just like to kind of wrap up with action items here. So, Ian, you're going to um, wait about a day ish and then push fetch. I'm going to send an email to the list about it. Um, I think I've got a pretty clear signal right in PR about this fin stuff. Um, I do want to say that some of this stuff is actually implied. For, like the subscribe thing, actually needs to go to subscribe PR. Like some of these rules actually will not go in my PR because they are they're like. It's actually a subscribe format question. Like the format would just have a group ID in it if it on the end range, right? Um, so uh, right, I'll um, so I'll do that. Uh, whoever's running the subscribe PR or thinking about running a subscribe PR can can um, can uh, kind of incorporate this into that. Um, anything else we need to address today? Yes. Can I talk yes, about please. this one thing? This is completely editorial. Um, Alan wrote a PR to rename subscribe namespace to subscribe announcements. I kind of like subscribe announces because announcements is kind of long. I would like to do one of the two. Do people have a preference? Isn't there a candy we can name it after? Okay. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Uh, I found subscribe namespace very, I, I like when I first saw it, I thought it meant like you get everything in a namespace. But but the question for this group is, do people prefer subscribe announcements or subscribe announces? Oh. I prefer announces for no real Shorter. Good. Yep. I like shorter, but like I also have to type a lot, so. A announcements isn't a thing in MOQ, announces are. Sure. I will, so I, I will take the action item to rename then, unless okay. somebody objects to announces. Uh, All right. Thanks. Tomorrow, so uh, we've already sent out a call for, for presentation topics in um, Dublin. I think, um, so on next Wednesday, we're gonna talk about priorities, uh, this, this priority clarification thing that we opened in Boston. 
Um, I think probably, I mean, I wonder if anyone disagrees the next big rock is like cleaning up subscribe. Um, maybe not a huge rock because we've had a lot of agreement, but there are a lot of details that are very and fuzzy. Right? Well, the priority thing we're talking about Wednesday, we'll see where that lands us. But like, um, I think if, if people have proposals, I we would especially like invite those for Dublin um, so we can have some high bandwidth discussion. I, 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 or maybe everyone agrees. I don't know. We'll see. But, um, you know, if someone's trying to PR, throw up some slides, that's that would be awesome. Okay. So again, if you, if, if you, Magnus. Yes. I, one thing just going back here and trying to understand that what, what was the conclusion on your fin reset topic? What was the conclusion there? What's the actions? You're going to, write I'm, up I, I'm going to write a, P, I'm going to write a PR that essentially covers the bullet points in that last slide. Although I will not cover the subscribe restrictions because that would go in a different PR that reformat subscribe. Um, and like I might, I will try to think through some of the other stuff that people brought up. Although I'm just not, I'm not sure how that's going to play out necessarily. Um, uh, so draft deadline will is Monday. So Ian will be publishing then uh, 07, and that will be the implementation target for um, Dublin. Colin, uh, Martin, quick question. Like uh, when you, when you said like you're working on the PR for the reset, but there's one PR on the closing streams. I think it was from Colin. Yeah. Oh, so I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I meant to do this and I didn't. Colin, like, do you want to take this? Uh, no, you, no, you, no, you, no, no, no. Go, go do this. I, I'm glad to co-author with you if you want, but I don't. Okay. I don't need that. Feel free. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll put up a new PR then. Th 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 thank you again for opening the subject because it no, was. Clo it was, close, it was close my, I'll, I'll close my PR and just carry on. But I, what I was okay. going to say is like. I think the feedback you got pretty loud and clear here is the bullet points that you had on that slide were not enough. You need to cut, do more okay. than that, I think. So I hope the PR like carries on with, you know, trying to be a complete solution to at least some part of the space on the, the yeah. I think it's um, going the right direction. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, I, I think there's a bit of a, I mean, I, we're running over time here. I, there's a little bit of a scope question about like, am I really solving all like stream signals here? Or am I just trying to like solve a very narrow question of like, when can I send a fin? <laughs> um, but I would argue you should try to solve as many stream signals as you can get clear consensus on. Yeah. Okay. So I, right. I think, I think you're going to have a hard time getting consensus without a solution that covers all the problems or people will keep okay. that. All that right. Well, yes, but do it. Get consensus on whatever you can. Go for it. Okay. I'll <laughs> yeah. make a big one. We'll see where we go. Okay. Uh, that's way too, oh, I'm getting kicked out anyway. So thanks, everyone. I'll see you next week. <laughs>